This is eBook Showtime, connecting readers with authors by promoting eBooks and the personalities who write the words. Today's guest author didn't set out to be a writer and certainly never believed she could write a book. Today she's an expert in desert landscaping, writing for websites and magazines. But her past was rather different as one of the first women firefighters for the US Forest Service in 1976, during which time she suffered harassment and discrimination. I'm pleased to tell you that she's with us here now on eBook Showtime to talk about her memoir, Summers of Fire. Linda Strader, hello and welcome to eBook Showtime. Well, thank you, Graham. I'm really pleased to be here today. Now, you describe your uh, book as an adventure story, a love story, a story of strong friendship, heartbreak, loss, inner strength, courage and rebuilding. Now, these are pretty strong, one might say explosive, uh, ingredients. Now, if you had to choose just one theme that you feel your book is really about, what would it be? Uh, probably the word that kind of covers a lot of those terms, and that would be perseverance. And no matter how hard things got, somehow I just found it in me to just keep going. And I, I've had pr friends tell me that, and, and it's hard for me to see it in myself. But when I look back, you know, I realize, well, doesn't everybody do that? But I guess not. <laughs> I'm being told, no, they don't. <laughs> so how long did it take you to write some of the fire? Wow. Um, five years. Um, and, and the first version just started out as just something to get me through a really, really bad time. Um, yeah, I had multiple losses happen to me, and I just kind of turned to, I was unemployed, I'd lost my job, and I was just trying to find something to do to keep my mind busy. I was, I was really depressed and um, trying to figure out where life was going, and I remembered a book, a, a short story that I wrote in college about my first fire, and I realized, well, you know, um, maybe I should write a little bit more. I mean, my English teachers thought that it was good enough to, to keep and show future classes about, that, you know, this is a good short story, and I, and I thought, well, okay, so maybe I can write something. So I just started writing down some of the adventures that I remembered um, and came up with 90 pages worth. And I shared it with friends and they're like, well, wow, this is, why don't you add more, you know? And so, okay, I had the time. So I added, you know, like 400 pages more. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> and of course that, and it was just stuff, you know, it was just, just stuff. And um, it, it wasn't really a story. And I started getting a little more serious about it and joined a writer's group and started looking into maybe I should publish this. Everyone kept telling me, you have a story to tell, and this is different and unusual, and and look at everything that you accomplished, and look at everything that you did back then, and and it's like, I mean, I've always been, I'm not a big promoter of me, <laughs> so this was hard, <laughs> Yeah. but uh, yeah, so five years, five years, writing and rewriting, and yeah, once I made, once I made the decision, I want to get published, and I want to get published traditionally, I didn't care how many revisions I had to make. That book was going to be right. So that's where the perseverance came in. <laughs> right. And of course, um, people can read about this uh, on your uh, blog. They can yeah. read, about the, yeah, read I do. about the behind the scenes of writing a book, so to speak. Yes. yes. Or the story of writing a book. Yeah. The story of writing the book. I've written a, a number of guest blogs on... Um, and how that all came about and what I learned. Um, writing a memoir is, is, it's not just about writing what happened to you. And that was hard for me to get at first. That people care more about how you lived your life and the decisions that you made and the twists and turns and how you figured things out. Because then they start to relate to, oh yeah, yeah, I was there and, and, and I never thought of doing that. And um, so that part, that was harder for me to get. And that was my last revision was when it finally dawned on me 
what I needed to change. You know, it, it wasn't about my adventures, which I mean, yeah, people are interested in that, but they want to know how that changed me and how and and how I became me by everything that happened to me and how I dealt with all of that. And I think I got it. Uh, I think that's a good point you've made that um, with with a memoir, people aren't just going to um, uh, I try to identify with with the story. They're going to try and identify with you, the author, and they're going to be if uh, not just critical of what happens in the story, going to criticise you perhaps for not making decisions they would have made. So I think perhaps um, just between you and me, uh, memoir writing is probably one of the the most challenging. Um, types of book um, po perhaps afterwards because that's when you're gonna you're gonna get the, the, the flack yeah. personally and literarily if that's a word yes exactly I'm also excited about sharing my story um, I've had a lot of I mean obviously I had a publisher that thought it was good enough to publish which is an honor but I've had a lot of beta readers, you know, early readers who said that, you know, one in particular who just really touched me when he said, and this is somebody I've never met. I mean, he, he, he read my book because he was kind enough to say, yeah, I'll give you some feedback. And, and he read it and he said, um, you know, I was really disappointed when it ended because I thought I, thought, I, I, I was really going to miss you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, I, I've been following you, and all of a sudden it's done, you know. And it's and I uh, it, and I said I got a little teary eyed there at the end, and I was like, you did? <laughs> 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 I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's good. That's good to make that connection. Um, now your book isn't uh, only about your adventures. As one of the first women firefighters with the U.S. Forest Service, I must add. Um, and I wonder about the emotional involvement and how it's affected your personal life. Yeah, I mean, um, it more than anything, I mean, I, I was, um, it's kind of interesting because someone asked me, or and I've, had a, I've had a number of people ask me this question, or, you know, something posted on Facebook, so, you know, in a group. So what would you tell the younger you? If you could tell her something, you know, what would you tell her if you could go back in time and tell her something? And through the writing of my book, I discovered that I wouldn't tell her a darn thing because actually she had a whole lot to tell me. I kept very detailed journals throughout this time. I, I have for, for, um, from, when, from when I was about 16 until I was 27, I kept very detailed journals. And I, I referred to these while I was writing. And I, rem I saw myself, I mean, constantly, I was, I was looking at what I wrote and I was thinking, did I know that, you know, 40 years from now that I was going to read this for more than just kicks, that I would actually read this and go, wow who was she what she was really she was smart and she was determined and she was strong and because i wasn't feeling particularly those things at the time and it was like she was telling me because i kept thinking i've lost me i lost me i don't know who i am i don't know where i'm going i don't know anything and she was telling me and i was thinking oh yeah i was thinking um I wish I was still like her, you know, my 20 year old, you know, she, wow, you know, she, wow, you know, even though I didn't think anything of it at the time. So what she's telling me now is she's telling me, I'm still you. I'm still you. And that was huge for me. That was huge. Cause it was like, oh, oh, I, I, I am still the 20 year old me, you know, it's like, so that was a big deal. And I, and it changed and it, and it actually has changed me today. And it helped me through those really bad times knowing that 
I'm still her. It's stronger. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I can I can identify with you on that. On a on a lighter note, would you say that your writing process changed at all whilst writing your book? Did you feel that your writing evolved? Oh, tremendously. Tremendously. Um in fact, you know, I, I just made a last minute change with my publisher because over the weekend I had a revelation. <laughs> it's just getting ready to go to print, you know, and I said, wait, stop. <laughs> um, I want to change this. And is it too late? And, and actually I'm breathing much easier right now. It wasn't too late. <laughs> um, because my early writing, that's when I didn't know how to write. And I didn't, I didn't know how to write until after I wrote it. And then I went back and learned how to write. And then I rewrote it. So, I mean, and, you know, it, it, you edit until it, until it's published and you don't have any choice. Um, but I, I just, um, I learned so much is that actually I, I grow in the book just from, I grow, I mean, you, you watch me mature in the book, in my story and how from, from age 20 actually up to present day. Um, but actually my writing does too. And I've already finished my second book, which is a prequel to this story. And I won't say it was easy, but I'll say that my writing is 100% better. And I think that comes with you know, a bit of confidence as you start to realize, oh, you know, this is good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. Even if you get a really bad, you know, um, critique for, out of it. Um, I've always, throughout the writing of Summers of Fire, especially when I was querying agents and publishers, if they told me, if they gave me the, the honors of actually saying, you know, not just that you're rejected, but saying why, they would say, well, you know, the chapter one didn't really bring, pull me in. And, oh, I was right on it. You know, I mean, after I got over the sting of being rejected, I was, it was like, okay. What do I need to do? Do I need to start the story in a different place? Do I need to start the story with a bang? Do I need to, you know, what do I need to do? I'm, I'm going to do this. And I, and I read and researched and did everything I could possibly think of to improve my writing. And there's always room for improvement. Um, and I think that that's what it takes for a new author. You have to be willing to take criticism. If, if you're going to get hurt and pout and say, no, I ain't changing that, you know, it's perfect. And I, you know, um, and, and you've never written anything before in your life, you're going to be, you're just, you're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> you're just not, you, you have to be willing to, and, I, and I'm not saying that you have to make every single change just because somebody said so. But you need to learn how to decide, are they right? So how on earth did you decide whose advice to take? Well, if it was sentence structure or grammar or something, I would defer to people who knew what they were talking about. Yeah. But when it came to storyline, you know, if they told me, I had someone in my writer's group tell me, I can't believe you were that stupid. Obviously, that comment was dismissed. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's like, and in fact, that had nothing to do with the writing and the fact that she said that made me quit the group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was done. Um, so you have to decide, are they commenting on story structure or are they telling you Oh, you couldn't possibly have felt that way, or why would you do that? And and it's like, no, this is a memoir, you know. Yeah. Excuse me, <laughs> you know. And and, and you're not, and, and you're being very, as, as you know, you're putting yourself out there. You're very vulnerable to people saying, "Well, why in the world would you do something like that?" Yeah. Well, you know what? I did. I did. And and oh well, you know. Yeah. And what did I get out of it? Well, maybe I never did that again if it didn't turn out well. <laughs> you know. <it's, laughs> That would be a bonus, you know, if I actually learned from that mistake. Yeah. Real life isn't scripted. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would weigh what they were saying as to whether or not what they were telling me had value. If it was telling me to change my voice, it was telling me, uh, no, we don't, you know, there, there's no way that I would ever believe that you did that. 
excuse me. Uh, you know, that was like an instant, you know, let that go. But what it came down to, you know what, I think you need to switch chapters one and two. Okay, I'd look at that and I would actually do what they said and see if it was better. And if it wasn't, then I would just put it back the way it was. But if it was, good point. So, Linda, just to finish, how would you recommend that new writers end their books? Well, I think it's important that you, that you're, I mean, a, a memoir, just like a novel, needs to have a beginning, middle, and end. It needs to have a story arc. You know, I mean, especially if you want to publish traditionally, you know, I mean, you, you, it really has to read like a book, like a novel. And, you know, and it's important that your reader get to the end and they feel satisfied that they just finished a story. And it doesn't have to have a good ending. A lot of people feel like, well, nothing great happened at the end, you know? And, well, it doesn't have to. I mean, that's not life. Life it isn't all like, oh, yeah, and I married Prince Charming and I, you know, you know, it doesn't have to have a happy ending. And, and actually the book that, that I considered my main um, reference, I won't say reference, but it was it inspired me to do my rewrite was Cheryl Strayed's book, Wild, From Lost to Found on the Pacific Crest Trail. And her story does not have this tremendous, profound, happy ending. And yet you feel very satisfied when you're done with her story. So don't worry about that. Just worry more that you are, um, that it comes full circle, that, that, that people will feel like, oh, okay, you know, I see where you've gone and where you've come back. And, and, and yeah, maybe it's not a happy ending, but so, but where are you? You know, what did you learn in your journey? And those are the kind of things that people relate to. How did you get to where you are today? And how did you survive what you survived? They want to know. They want to know that. Linda, that's been fantastic. Uh, but time's up, I'm afraid. So I'd like to thank you very much and wish you all the best. Goodbye. Thank Bye, you Linda. so much.